I should have hit that a minute ago. Just building up the music. Hey guys. Welcome to the final episode. Or part of episode. I might cut this in the middle of Subnautica Below Zero. Place of face hair. Um, and uh, at this point we'll probably have already listened to the episode before it. Where I'm doing voiceover of the stuff where I lost audio. And I got up to the point where I had saved the game. So from here, should be able to just pull this up and be fine. I did see that it was like updating save as we were going, as I brought it up. Um, so hopefully everything is still perfectly fine. Um, but there's a little bit of gameplay left um, and lots and lots of story. Okay, so let's do that and then let's talk about the game that was Subnautica Below Zero. Yeah, that's the image, right, of when she came here, which is something I was talking about earlier, of... Like, I, the situation under which that she left just didn't feel like she was really planning on coming back. It wasn't also like a sanctioned trip. Maybe this was her one chance, but I'm kind of thinking like, well, if this trip, if this ship here was going out, could she have stayed on it long enough to come back and maybe not be coming down in the middle of an asteroid storm? I don't, I don't know. Meteorite storm or whatever that is. I really need a newer you can play the games but just chug a bit doesn't it like it this takes a bit to get going I restarted I restarted playing Subnautica some time ago I, and I put it back down again unfortunately but, um and I thought I was wondering like man if I play this again will I be able to be as as scared I was like maybe I should need maybe I need to put it in hardcore but man, there are bugs. I can always back up my save. I don't. I think I just went for survival again, um, and just trying to not like speed run it, right? But be like, yeah, I know what I'm doing, right? I know what this game is about. I know how to play it right. Let's move on it. I know how to avoid the big baddies and stuff like that. Let's just go into it. And uh, it was still kind of scary. <laughs> All right, I might need to turn this down a bit. I mean, this is a very loud part of the game, probably. Walk away from that. Yeah, okay. So, Alan went through there. And we're just gonna go. our cybernetic friend. Kind of cybernetic, right? Kind of. Um, Robin, you're just in time. The phase gate is opening. You've been hiding a phase gate here this whole time? Only for the last millennium. It will lead us home. No wonder you hid yourself, Volterra. It was imperative to keep the home world safe, in hopes that the others survived. Yeah. Hmm. 
until we have a couple of the arms. to me and I will initiate a ship assembly. Unclear. The masks are in place. The energy field is ready. There is no time to lose. Oh, there goes arms. Say that. Ready to leave the past behind. Good. Please brace yourself and then we will depart. Launching in three, two, one. What will we find when we get there? If I am the last of my kind, I will experience the sorrow of 10,000 souls to me. <laughs> Looks like this phase gate dropped you right into atmosphere. more minutes after that point. So I will most likely be cutting somewhere. Um, so, let's talk about some more things. Um, I 
on turning it down just in general. Um, you have a you have an actual protagonist, right? That's not you, um, and that's an interesting choice. Um, I. I'm not the smartest person in the world. I don't know why they made the choice. Um, maybe because there's a difference between choosing to land on the planet and being, you know, stranded there by a ship explosion. Um, I mean, the reason why you're even in the orbit of 4645B, or was it 4546 um, in the first one, is part of the lore of the game. There is a reason why you became stranded beyond the fact that the gun shot you down. Like, you were close enough to be shot down by the gun for a reason, and that's in the lore and the data logs that you find. Um, and not and pretty early on, too. And so, the, um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let you listen to this, and I'm gonna take off my headset, because it still sounds loud to me. Um, <clears throat> The um, so maybe having someone choose to go to the planet clearly, you had to have it in person, right? Narratively, like you had to have this could not be an avatar for you per se because you don't have a reason to go to this planet. You're like, uh, I remember the Reapers and the Ghost of Lives and the Uber Ghost of Lives. Well, how would I go there? Oh, and you're gonna tell me we're relying on the frozen side. No! Right? Like, you don't have a reason to go there. Um, and so they probably had to make a character that has a reason. Now, I suppose you kill still could have done, like, some of the reasoning just in data logs and stuff like that. Um, maybe. It would work a little different, like, because usually in the data logs you're, you're reading the past instead of present. I think they had to give the person a character. Whenever you do that, though, right? Like, you risk not everyone liking the character that you're actually playing, right? Like, I didn't like this character a whole lot. She occasionally said things I liked. She occasionally didn't. Um, but for the most part, I, I found her motivations a little odd and her attitude a little abrasive i'm sure not everybody felt that way i did right like i said you create a character that you're going to put the player in control of instead of being just the, the nondescript character of the previous time and so you're no longer getting to just kind of like project yourself into the character because some of us are going to conflict with the character that they've written that's that's definitely me as we discussed um, the world is seems to be a lot smaller. Um, to be fair, I never found that frozen Leviathan, right? So there's whatever was going on around there, like what path that was, I did never see. But then again, I'll bet you it's just a path there and then the room that the big Leviathan is. That's not like the same thing as the big open sea. Right, like I know in the first one you're actually in a crater, you're not in the big open sea, right? Beyond the crater's edge was what that was. Um, it's the first game, not really a survival game, but a horror game. A horror game, a, a horror exploration game, right? A game where you're exploring, but you're scared to do so, and yet you still need to slash want to. Um... They did do some of that. This is where, like, I've, I've, I've watched... This is kind of why I've watched so many videos of other people kind of putting this in words. Because it's hard for me to describe because I feel like they still did that. Um, there were times I was still like, oh gosh, don't get, you know, don't let those things get you. But in the end, once you got the, the defensive thing... Um, really all that scared of anything, right? Just zap it and be done. Because it's not like it's going to crush your ship, right? Like, it would be different 
I was thinking about this last time, right? And I, so I don't know where the video cut's going to be. Um, it'd be one thing if it was, um, the thing did like, well, basically any, anything upward of half, right? 50, 51%, anything up to like 80% of your structure's integrity. If that happened, then you'd be like, oh, I zapped it. But I have to find a place to stop and repair because otherwise I'm a, like, I lose the ship. And once I lose the ship, I'm a goner because I'm, you know, a thousand underwater or in a cave or whatever. And I kind of suffocate. I'm going to drown. Um, so, yeah, somehow it just, somehow it missed some of the horror mark. Even though, between both games, my most terrifying moments were running from the, um, the worm leviathans? Is that what they were called? I don't remember what they were, but the land-based ones. And maybe that's the difference, is that I was running from them. Like, I knew I was terrified. I had already looked up some information about them, a little spoilery of myself, I guess, and known that, um... They don't have a hitbox. There's nothing you can drive them away with, right? Because every other Leviathan's behavior, I'm sorry, is hit them and they'll they'll turn away. Even if only for a minute. Um, they don't have a hitbox, so you can't even hit them. And if they get you, they have two attacks. One that does like 70% of your health and the other one just kills you outright. Um, so, I was just running. But I, I honestly, I don't think it was just that. I mean, I think that they were dangerous and that they were, you know, rumbling underground and then going to fly over my head like it. Go back to those videos. It scared the poop out of me. I mean, the first time the Reaper grabbed me in the, num the first one, right? He did it from behind, so I didn't even know what had happened until he turned around and screamed in my face and was crushing my thing. And then to realize that once it had crashed and I was trying to swim away, I'd actually swum back to its territory instead of back to the pod. Terrifying. I was so under. Somehow I kept from cursing. That was like half as a scary, half as afraid of as I was in Below Zero with those guys. But that's not true about the others. The um, Shadow Leviathans freaked me out more. I think the whole like slobbering on top of your head thing um, kind of like creeps me out, scared me a little bit. And it was a good switch from the guy to constantly just fight you up front, fight you up front, fight you up front, right? Like the the red scaled ones with the beak that opens up uh, in, in, in below zero. Um, Technically, the worm, right? Like he grabs you with your with the spike on his nose and throws you up in the air and then catches you. So that's a, a kind of a pokey attack from the front. You've got, um, and then you go back to the Reapers. The Reapers clearly did that. Um, and so it was nice to see a different a different attack. I think the kind of oozing, like I think I actually thought about like the fact that it's probably kind of trying to like digest you from the outside without swallowing you. That's gross. <laughs> um, so, um, I remember being frustrated a lot more in Subnautica Below Zero. I hadn't really thought about that till just now, right? Frustrated to find, when I was trying to find diamonds, only to find that they were actually really not that far away at all. I just had to look in the crevices near the island where, like, where there was lava vents. I didn't have to go down deep. I just had to do that. So, for a positive, it's not exactly the same place as the other game, the previous game, and so it's not just a copy pasta. But I, it was frustrating to, be, to look so hard for things. And then there was the time where I got lost. And another time where I was like, I'm not spending, you know, just recently in the last video, right? Like, I'm not spending all this time playing while I'm lost. I'm going to do, I'm going to look up a map. And so there's those things. Um, I definitely think that I didn't find the story as interesting. Like, 
maybe you, for some people, story isn't the biggest deal in Subnautica or Below Zero. Um, but I've played a lot of survival games. And I do think that truly the main thing that got me is that it's exploration with a horror pushback. Like, exploration, desire working this way, and horror kind of pushing you back a little bit here. Because exploration is and discovery, those are my, so that's my top, that's probably my top aesthetic of play like give me systems to explore give me maps to explore i'm so happy um like i'm one of the people who was like i didn't play minecraft a lot at that point anymore but when they basically made like oh it's just open knowledge now like you can just you can just see what the what the recipes are it's like that's boring like i wanted to actually find out what they were um and so the story, but the story was there because also because it, it directed my exploration. I loved the exploration. That's really what I'm there for. But if you just say, here's a map, I might very well do it. But after a while, I might also just put the game down because, well, I can go see around what's around that corner. I can go see what's around that corner. Do I, why? At what point am I going to put that down and start playing another game? Right? Rather than going like, oh, Subnautica, this is awesome. I gotta keep playing it. I wish I could wipe this from my brain and play it again for the first time. Um, so, yeah. The story was important, right? Like, I think the Don't Starve is really neat. I think Terraria is kind of fun. I thought Minecraft was fun. What missed out on those games was story. It might have been some kind of progression. Terraria had multiple bosses. But I didn't have a story. And I think ultimately that was also necessary between making it exploration and having me, giving me a story that drove the exploration really got me interested. So, Low Zero story, I'm not as interested in. And there were two stories, right? First one, there's just one story and lore. In this one, there's two stories the lore that you're discovering is actually the first story. What happened to my sister? What went down? And then there's um, the story of Alan. Oh, well, new job, new schedule of time. Um, but Marguerite, like Marguerite, like seeing that that was Marguerite that was alive and step finding her log. That was all really interesting to me. Marguerite gives you kind of a fetch task and then you're kind of done with her. And I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, she was kind of a bee, so like I don't really miss her per se. And, you know, there's something to be said for not just like copying and pasting forward everything. Anyways, it's, um, yeah, hey, I'm not saying Subnautica is a below, below zero is a bad game. I'm not even saying it's a 6 out of 10, or maybe even out of a, a 7 out of 10. I might still have to put this on, I might still have to put this as an 8 out of 10, or a 9 out of 10. Um, if Subnautica Below Zero was the first Subnautica I had ever played. And if Subnautica Below Zero was the first Subnautica I ever played, I wonder how I would have play, felt about the original Subnautica. You know, something that's got much more open ocean and this and that. And no personalized character. That's an, that's an, interesting, that's an interesting thought. And I'm not really going to delve and try to figure that out much. I've got too many other things to do. Um, so, but what I'm trying to say is, for all my negatives... I'm just trying to figure, I'm just trying to explain why I'm, you'll get, you'll find me telling, yeah, go play Subnautica. And then, but I, and I'll say, and if you enjoyed that a lot, go play some Subnautica Below Zero. I'm not saying, if you enjoyed it, go play some Subnautica Below Zero. Because if you only just sort of enjoyed it, I don't know that you're going to enjoy Subnautica Below Zero. Like it might have dipped down low enough that you won't enjoy it, but... Can I see myself playing this game again? Uh, yeah. Probably further apart, though, than, um, than I did, uh, 
the original game. Right? I think that was, I mean, I streamed that game and I started playing it last year again sometime, right? So 2023, last time I streamed Subnautica, I think we just lived in Omaha, so that was probably like 17 or something, right? So that was, I mean, that was a good six years. So it might be eight, nine years before I come back to Below Zero. If I do, I will definitely try to find that frozen Leviathan. I will definitely do things a lot faster. That is something that has occurred to me. I remember actually now, back when I was playing this more regularly, like not knowing that Station Zero was right there and so easy to get to. Like I was always trying to figure out how to get there from whatever the station is on the west side, like going through the land. When actually it was right there, it was just a little cave water bubble thingy place and just north of you from where you started like like that would have made things so much easier you know would i try to go ahead and you know be around the the place where the ice worm leviathans are more and try to like actually really explore that place rather than just frantically and super terrifiedly running around yeah, like these are the things I would do with another playthrough, and so it's not like another playthrough has nothing for me, right? Um, but it definitely doesn't have like the big open. And I think again, another thing is because the map isn't very large. I, I never wanted to make another base. You know, there was no need to make another actual base. I made a lot of scanning bases, to be fair, but I never made like another base. Um, so that'd be interesting. Just had this wild idea about spanning a base from where you start, like the very place where you enter the water all the way where you fix Alan's body. That'd be kind of interesting, right? Like just all these like ladders and tunnels and, and, and you know, oh, now you're, you know, constantly you're, you're, you'd be running low on structural integrity. You just like keep reinforcing this whole thing. That'd be a project. That's like a mega project, right? In, in Minecraft. All right. Um, that's it. Uh, that's uh, 27 minutes. It's almost half an hour with only 10 minutes of gameplay. So um, I'm going to convert this to video and add it to the other one and split things up, I think. Or just put this up. I'll talk to you guys.